Hi, welcome to Life's Connections. I'm Mark. Our goal here is to use scripture to answer any questions that you may have. If you're a fan of science fiction movies or television shows, or perhaps even if you're not, you've probably seen an episode in which people are snatched away. Maybe it's by aliens carrying them away in their UFO. Maybe it's by a transporter beam or some other piece of technology. There was a recent book series called Left Behind, which sold millions of copies and was made into movies, and it featured people being snatched away in an event that is called the rapture. That's what we want to look at today, this event. We want to ask the question, what is the rapture? And we want to take a little bit of time to explain that from the scriptures. But before we look at a few verses, I just want to give you the word history behind the term rapture. You see, if you look through your scriptures in the English language, you will not find the word rapture in there anywhere. So where does this term come from? Well, it comes from an old Latin term, which means to be caught up. And that's where we get the idea of rapture being caught up, snatched away. In fact, in English today, if one is enraptured by something, he or she is caught up in ecstasy with that thing. So now that we've given just a very brief definition, let's go to the scriptures and see what it says about this event called the rapture. We're going to start in the book of First Thessalonians in chapter 4 and verses 16 and 17. In these verses we read, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up, that's where that term rapture comes from, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Here we see the Apostle Paul giving a brief description of what occurs in this rapture. He says in verse 16 that the dead in Christ, those who have passed away, believers in Jesus Christ, they've already died. And he says they'll rise first. Then we who are alive and remain, and we say we who are alive and remain, it may not be us, but those of us who are believers still alive at the time of the rapture will be caught up, will be raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall always be with the Lord. So in these verses, Paul quickly expresses the idea that the rapture is being caught up into the air with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll look at another passage from Paul, and that's in 1 Corinthians. I'm going to turn to chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, and we'll read two verses from here, verses 51 and 52. And I will tell you, you could read all of 1 Corinthians 15 to really get the background for that, but that would take a long time for us. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. When Paul says sleep here, he's referring to death. He's saying we will not all die, but we will all be changed. And he's talking about believers. All believers will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. He's referring to that same event, the rapture that he was talking about in 1 Thessalonians. He says that the dead will be raised imperishable, that is, they'll never die again. And we, those who are alive, will be changed. In the rapture, we'll be caught up, but we'll also be changed. We'll be changed as the dead into imperishable bodies. You know what imperishable means, I assume. If something can perish, it can die or it can rust, it can be destroyed. Imperishable means that it can't be imperishable things will last forever. They'll last in all eternity. Why is there a rapture? Jesus predicted the rapture all the way back in the book of John. In the book of John and chapter 14, he was telling his disciples a little narrative. And again, I'd love to read the entire chapter for you, but I just want to give you a little background. In John chapter 14, Jesus uses terminology which fit the Middle Eastern weddings of that day and age. Let me read this verse and then I'll tell you a little more about that. He writes, in, or excuse me, he says in verse 3, John 14, 3, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, 
there you may be also. He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to believers. What he is saying to them when he says this is he's going to prepare a place, and they understood that language because in that culture, in the Middle Eastern culture of that day, when a woman and man were betrothed to each other in marriage, first the man had to go and prepare the place where he would take his bride upon receiving her as his wife. He would prepare the place, and once the place was ready, he would come to collect his bride to take her to the place that he had prepared. The bride didn't know the exact time that that was coming. She had a general idea, but she didn't know the exact time that that event would be coming. Jesus uses this analogy, and we understand this to be a rapture analogy. He has gone away to prepare a place for us, he tells us, and he will come again, and he will take us. We will be snatched away. We will be caught up. We will be raptured, those of us who are believers, to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. There's so much more I wish I had time to tell you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth. We thank you that we know Although Jesus is not with us here today, he has promised that he is coming for us again, for all of us who believe. Lord, if there is one out there listening to my voice who does not know the truth of that, I pray that that one would put his or her trust in Jesus Christ and not have to fear seeing believers being snatched away and being left behind. And Lord, as believers, we are so thankful, knowing that we look forward to being changed, to being imperishable and being forever with the Lord. We thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We've looked just briefly at this question, what is the rapture? There's a lot more that we could talk about. If you have questions about the rapture, or questions about anything else we've talked about, or just an issue you'd like to hear something from in the Bible, please contact us. In just a few seconds, the screen will tell you how to do that. We'd also encourage you to subscribe to our channel. We'd love for you to join us here as we post a new video every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep walking on the well-lit path.